Das Wort hat jetzt für die Fraktion der Liberalen Herr Vorsitzender Verhofstadt. Ja, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I would in fact like to start uh, by, by saying uh, to the British people that it is always hard to accept a decision that you disagree with. But we have to accept it. Uh, their choice was clear and uh, need to be respected, at least on that, I think the more than 700 members here uh, can agree. So it's, it's in my, my feeling not so much uh, the choice that they have made that is hard, because, let's say, it, choice that is the essence of democracy and of our democracy. What makes it so hard for me, and I think also for the other group's leader and for everybody here in this House, is the way it succeeded. The absolute negative campaign. The posters of Mr. Farage showing refugees like in Nazi propaganda because they copied it at that moment. The, I never thought it was possible that somebody in this house should do a thing like that. The lies also on migration. The lies on, oh, Turkey will join the Union next week. <laughs> or the lies on the 315 million pounds that should return immediately to the National Health Service and, and, and now is, don't go back to the National Health Service. It's that uh, climate of fear that has been created, of negativism that has been created. That is the most shocking thing of what happened in Britain not the choice of the people, because the choice of the people is democracy. And today, yeah, we see the outcome of it, uh, a multi-billion loss in stock market value, a uh, dramatic drop of the pound, yeah, it goes down when you speak, uh, Mr. Farage, uh, wait a little bit. <laughs> Standards and poor has downgraded uh, the British currency, and every time Mr. Boris Johnson speaks, the more the British currency slips. So the Brexiteers, and they also here in the House, uh, and Mr. Kamal will tell us, yeah, but it's only a temporary setback. It's only a little glitch. I don't know. I hope for us all it's only a glitch. But uh, what I do know is that we need the fastest as possible to end this uncertainty as soon as possible. That is needed now. And. The worst thing that can happen is to continue this uncertainty. Only the immediate evocation, I think, of the procedure for a clean separation as foreseen in the treaty can end what I call the toxic climate that has been created since Thursday of last week. A toxic climate that is bad for business, bad for investment, bad, Mr. Farage, for all hardworking ordinary, decent people. And triggering, triggering the so-called Article 50 is not a punishment. What we are talking about, for those who voted to leave, it's quite the opposite, I should say. It is respecting their choice if we do so. But it is an act against the biggering of the Tory leadership for the moment and against the selfishness of one man who is ready to do everything, even to sacrifice the voice of 70 million British citizens and the interest of 60 million other citizens to become Prime Minister of the UK, or should I say, Prime Minister of the dual kingdom of England and Wales for the moment. So we both, we both, and I say to those, the British representatives, our colleagues here, we both, Brits and Europeans, cannot afford to be stuck in limbo. Let's be honest. Mr. Kamal said, ah, we need to negotiate, we have to prepare ourselves. Prepare ourselves? Prepare ourselves? The Leave camp is adrift for the moment. Lost. Rudderless. Mr. Kamal is uh, voting for a Leave. And Mr. Uh, his colleague uh, from the Polish delegation asked for a new referendum. 
in Britain. Is that the certainty we need? So we colleagues, the 27 other members of the European Union, should not wait for a disoriented Tory party to get its act together. We should now move forward with courage and with conviction, united also towards a new horizon, because there is a new horizon, a new future for our old continent. And to succeed this, Mr. Chairman, I can tell you, and I will say to all colleagues, we don't need a lot of imagination. You know what we need? A healthy memory. Yeah. A healthy memory to return to the big and great ideas of our founding fathers. There is what we need. And today, today that is very clear what it means. What it means, Jean-Claude. It means four things. We need an effective European government for the Union and for the Eurozone. Let's make it. We need a European border and coast guard to safeguard the free movement of our people. We need a European capacity to fight against terrorism and transnational crime. And we need, I think, also the fastest as possible a defense community as the Americans are no longer prepared to pay for the free riders we have become so long time ago. So we need one thing, not to start informal negotiations, preparing ourselves. We need to show to the people of Europe that we are capable of building a new and better Europe, a union that can really address the many crises that face. In short, and I conclude, let us do for one thing, a thing that is un-European and exceptional. Let us use for once this opportunity. I said, Mr. Chairman, the power of this House, the cradle of European democracy, to put Europe back on track. And let's not wait to do it. For the Liberal Party, speaks Herr Verhofstadt. Very, very short, Mr. President. By the end of this debate, I want to make an appeal to the, to the members uh, present here uh, to send now a strong message uh, to the European Council uh, and uh, to, the, uh, to the European citizens. And the best way we can do that is to vote massively, massively uh, the resolution we have prepared uh, for this session uh, and not to start uh, to say, oh, this or this, I don't like it. What is now politically important is a massive vote in favor of that resolution. And my last thing will be uh, to Mr. Farage saying that I'm shocked, Mr. Farage. You are presenting yourself here as a defender of uh, the, the little man, uh, the hard worker, while you have an, uh, an offshore financial construction. I don't think that all citizens have offshore financial constructions uh, in, in, in Britain. But, okay, let's be positive. Finally, we're going to get rid of the biggest waste in the budget of the Union that we have paid for 70 years, your salary. Thank you. For the ECA fraction, speaks Herr Legutko.